All right, guys, finally, I've bought this uh, convertible styling bar for my SM95 probably back in July or August, but I actually ended up buying it used and it didn't come with hardware. And then getting hardware turned into a whole freaking fiasco. And so I actually ended up going through, who did we get it from here? Ah, CDC. So the local CDC guys are actually in Wixom, Michigan. So I was able to drive on down, get a hardware kit from those guys. Um, because this is a different brand. This isn't a CDC bar, but I'll probably, it's probably in the description. But uh, anyway, I was able to get hooked up with the uh, kit, and so I've had that even for a while now. I just haven't had a chance to put this on because if you watched the last video, which I'll link up right here, we ended up pulling the whole interior out of this car, and we did a whole bunch of kill mat sound deadening on the entire interior and the trunk and the doors. And so I did that because I knew I had to take out the interior anyway. So if you're watching this video to see how to get the interior out to put it on your styling bar, check out this other video because I do a step-by-step -step of uh, how to get all the, uh, the back interior panels out. So from where we're starting at today, uh, I think the first modification we're going to do is actually to the plastic interior panels. And so we're going to get started with uh, putting the templates on those and getting those cut out. So stay tuned. <laughs> So like I was saying, you guys, if you can find a good deal online, um, for example, I think I bought this from American Muscle, um, but it was like a great deal. It was like 200 bucks or something instead of like 370, but it didn't come with the hardware. So I was thinking at first, okay, it's just some nuts and bolts, no big deal, but it's not. So these things take these kind of special uh, little brackets here that you actually end up pop riveting into the car with these nut certs and this is you know kind of how you screw in the bar to your car on an sn95 so you know unless you want to fabricate these which you know you could um you know go to cdc get yourself a kit because um the, whatever this brand is i can't think of it right now um i'll put it down below they didn't have any of the hardware kits in stock so i think it was like 40 dollars through cdc and you know it comes with everything you need all this stuff it even gives you um uh, some of the pop rivets, so I had to buy a pop rivet gun. So, you know, we should be good to go. But the instructions are really nice. Um, they even gave you, you know, all the tools you need, blah, blah, blah. But what you really need is the uh, templates, which, where the heck do I got those? So, yeah, you need some of these templates to be able to uh, actually put them onto our panels to be able to cut the panels out. All right, guys, so I'm going a little bit out of order here with what the directions are telling me. Um, but these are your brackets that are going to get attached um, right over here on this uh, B pillar. And so um, basically all you can do is this bracket has a little eighth inch pinhole. And what they want you to do is take your pop rivet, which this will eventually help hold this in place um, from, from the inside once the final installation happens. But there's also a hole already in the car from the factory that's the same size. And so you can literally just kind of take this here and uh, slide it through both sides that'll just hold this bracket in place for us so we know it's in the correct location now the only thing we have to do um, you know that could be a little hard is make sure that it is parallel uh, to the body line or you know basically that uh you know it's it's running um straight up and down right so that's pretty easy because you got this nice body line to follow so just get it good and then just take your hole punch or you can take a sharpie doesn't matter and then just simply go ahead and mark this so i've already ran this through a few times and so I've already got some marks, pop it out, and boom, now we've got our uh, marks to be able to drill and uh, drill our pilot holes at least. And then now we've got to go ahead and remove a couple screws. There's one here, one here. Um, the instructions said these were seven millimeters. Pop these bad boys out, it says we can just lean this thing forward, and then that's going to allow us to get our hands in there. And once we drill this to the right size, um, this bracket will go in from the inside and protrude through, and then we'll put the pop rivet right there just to hold this bracket in place. So it's uh, pretty pretty simple from that respect. All right, guys, so now that we got this marked, um, I'm just gonna take, a, I think this is like a little eighth inch uh, drill bit. I'm gonna drill a pilot hole. Then it wants me to use a unibit and take these holes up to 9 sixteenths up to 5 8 So sounds like I'm gonna start with 9 sixteenths and uh, we'll see if that works. And uh, you know, if there's maybe some, some play or something doesn't fit, then we can go to the bigger size. But um, it's probably because it's a unibit also, it's kind of hard to get that perfect size. But anyway, got these kind of uh, ready to go. So start drilling into this beautiful car. All right, there's one. Good Lord, a little too much power on there. 
All right, so from this point, let me go get some, uh, some hardware and let's remove this uh, speaker and then we can drill these out bigger with the Unibit. All right, so I lied. I still didn't take off the stupid uh, speaker yet, but uh, I drilled out the other side. So both sides are kind of drilled with the uh, little bit. Now I'm going to try to take this to 916. Now, usually with the Unibit, I like to throw a little bit of uh, electrical tape around where I want to stop. And I didn't really find my electrical tape. And so I found some, uh, whatever this is, plumber's tape or whatever. So it's probably going to burn right off. But anyway, let's give it a shot. Let's see if it works. We'll give this a try. Okay, it's probably it's probably on the bigger side there. It's probably the uh, five eighths, but let's make sure we get the right hole. We don't screw it up here. All right, so for these speakers, they are seven uh, or I'm sorry, T20 Torx bits, and again, there's just these two little guys. You know what? Actually, I lied. A seven millimeter would have worked. At first, it looked like they were just like a round screw, but no, seven would work. I must be losing my freaking vision or something, man, up close. But anyway, once we get this uh, speaker cover or this, uh, sorry, the speaker out of the way, there's going to be kind of a cover behind it. And uh, so it's glued to the car. So we're going to have to pull that off. So that's going to be, you know, probably fun. Okay. Boop. Yeah. There's a metal bracket there. Thought I scratched my car. All right. So this bad boy now is just kind of glued on here. So of course we're going to kind of be careful, but wedge a screwdriver. And basically all we gotta do is get enough room here um, to, uh, to be able to get our hand in there to put that bracket. And then we're going to uh, pop rivet it from this side and our brackets installed. Then after that, it's just a matter of cutting holes in our plastic. All right, fellas. So now we're at the point of almost no return. So to get this thing off, um, I just used a, um, uh, geez, can't think of the name. Scraper, spatula, thingy, and it just takes a little bit. That glue is on there pretty good, so um, did take a minute to kind of work it and get it going. Trying to get that light back on, um, but then it comes right out, and um, it's just kind of messing with the bracket. So the way this bracket goes on, of course, is our pin, our hole is for the pin is down at the bottom, and these actually have to go facing the back of the car. So these nut certs have to face the back of the car. You do not want these to stick through the holes which is kind of how I originally thought, but I just looked at the directions. Good thing I did, right? So faces backwards like this, and then um, our, uh, our, our pin will come through from the front, just kind of hold it. So that's kind of cool. The only bad part is it's still going to be able to wiggle, so then you could have some alignment problems with this. But um, anyway, it makes sense. That way this is going to kind of hold it and push it and all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, get her kind of lined up in place. I don't drop this stupid thing. So there she is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's looking nice. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you know what, screw it. I think it'll be all right. So anyway, ugh, let's go ahead and stick this in. This oh, geez, all right. So anyway, make sure you put your freaking uh, pin in the right way too, right? So. It's going through this and then it's going to pull that. Don't, don't screw it up like I was about. What we ended up with. So, um, yeah, it worked out. I didn't, I didn't enlarge them anymore. And, um, once I got the pop rivet in place, then yeah, it's held in there securely. It's not wiggling left and right. Like I was thinking. So perfect. I'm wondering if I want to try to, shoot that with some paint or something you know at least like paint it on man just it's gonna rust over the years right i mean your panel's gonna cover it but uh, anyway so this is done i might throw some paint on it and then uh i gotta do the other side and then once we do that next step is uh we gotta cut the holes in the plastic and then i that's about it i think then we start putting this whole thing back together slide our thing through bolt it up should be easy peasy after that now i gotta put the whole rest of the freaking car back together so just a moment ago, I took the, uh, the light bar or the uh, styling bar, there's no light on it, 
And I just tried to mock it up in place because I was curious if this thing was going to actually, you know, line up. And sure enough, it doesn't. So the, um, you know, the bar is, is basically too wide, right? And this is just from probably being off the car for who knows how long, right? This is a, a used product. So it could have been sitting on a shelf for two years. So um, no big deal. Um, I tried to kind of bend it, you know, just pushing it on the ground. Didn't seem to work too much. So um, I've had to do this kind of stuff before. I'm just going to take a ratchet strap. We're going to put the ratchet strap on each end. And we're just going to ratchet strap it and um, kind of play with it, you know, until we can kind of get it to the point where it's bent enough that it lines up reasonably well. Because my thought is that once we put these covers on, you know, we're trying to slide this thing down in through the hole, you know, you're not going to be able to really bend that thing. I mean, this bar is... It, it's freaking pretty heavy duty. I couldn't bend it. Like, you know, with one guy trying to trying to wedge it on that side and push it, there was no way it wouldn't move at all. So um, definitely going to be easier if we can kind of get it into shape like we need it already. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just uh, get my tape measure, take kind of a quick measurement across for what that is, and then just kind of make sure, um, you know, maybe when I do the ratchet strap, I'll set it the same, you know, maybe two inches shorter, just that way it'll have some spring when it comes back out, something like that. So anyway, I'm going to mess with that in the background. But uh, anyway, getting to these panels, I'm going to kind of start doing one here. I got to get this set up. But uh, one thing they want us to do is we actually have to remove this top um, clip that helps hold this in. And the reason why is, of course, we're going to be drilling um, a hole here and a hole down there for uh, that bracket that we already installed, right? So that's going to hold it in place, um, you know, hold this panel in place anyway. Well, actually, it won't really hold it in place when I think about it because, yeah, anyway. So apparently it must be fine, right? I guess, I guess it's going to be located by the top of the bar. So anyway, it says uh, use a putty knife and a, and a hammer and just kind of hammer this bad boy off. It's just kind of glued on there. Um, so I'm going to try to do that. And then after that, then we got to take our template and then get our holes. Um, so again, drill some pilot holes here and here, two pilot holes here, whatever. And then uh, you go back with uh, the one inch hole saw from the inside and then follow that up with the one and three quarter inch hole saw. Um, and then you can kind of, if you want to, you can kind of uh, trim it out with some uh, side cutters or dikes to make it nice, you know, one big nice hole. And these are just going to be, I think, just the one inch um, hole saw for that. So I'm going to get some paper. Get this kind of set up so we don't scratch the thing too much and get rolling. So here's what I did for this uh, this bar to try to get the right shape or the, the right you know overall length. So I measured the car and the car is about 55 and three quarter inches from a bolt hole to bolt hole. And so I think um, when I just measured this right now, I'm a bit under like 54 inches or something. So I'm just going to leave this here. You know, hopefully it kind of stays. But I'll end up you know I'll, I'll loosen it. We'll kind of see where it is. Take some measurements, but. 55 and three quarters is about where I need it to be. And then hopefully it'll, uh, you know, line right up, slide right in here. So I think that's a good little trick that I didn't see on any of the other YouTube videos from, you know, all the actual companies that are trying to sell you the stuff, right? They make it look so easy, but it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the butt here and there, right? All right, let's see what we can break. So before I get into my little template, I'm going to try to get off the uh, bracket. So supposedly, a little hammer and a putty knife. They also specifically say do not twist the, uh, the putty knife because that could distort the side of the panel and mess it up or whatever. So basically, I think it's just like a little kind of a plastic weld and a plastic weld down there. So basically, I think we're just trying to break the plastic welds. And then it should break free. All right. Well, there's one. All right. So these um, templates are side specific, passenger side and uh, driver side, of course. So passenger, passenger. Let's make sure. Passenger. Check. Okay. So they want us to just cut out this little speaker. Um, where the where this little speaker hole is and then basically this this line here is the front line here so it's going to be pretty easy to do we just got to cut this out and then uh, i got some tape here some masking tape we'll get her taped down there and then shouldn't be too bad then i've got a uh, punch and it says just take your punch punch your two holes and then you're ready to drill some pilot holes and uh, do the same for this dude here 
which all we're then going to do is look at this is actually a nice template. So I already give you these holes here to make sure that lines up. Make sure that lines up with the edge. And this is going to be pretty freaking easy, right? And then boom, we just do our holes, drill it. Easy peasy lemon squeezy, baby. Anyway, there's one down. So we got our uh, pilot holes all drilled. I'm going to go ahead and pilot hole and template up the other one. So pretty easy to use, you know, <laughs> we'll see. seems like it's easy to use, but uh, we'll do the other one and then we'll switch it up, get the uh, um, hole sauce and start doing the hole sauce. All right, both panels got our pilot holes. Now we're ready to rock with the, uh, I'm going to do the one incher first uh, for these here. Give her hell. Okay, easy peasy. Now the interesting one is this big old freaking one and three quarter inch roll. These are gonna be, and they overlap, so this is gonna be a little bit fun. I'm not sure how much, there you go, now you can see. So. Hopefully, hopefully I'm doing it right. Okay, well, that was a little bit nerve wracking. Cool. So now it just says clean up, kind of clean the edges up, you know, with a dike and stuff and file it or whatever. So we do that, finish doing the other panel, and then we're ready to start installation. So the next step involves actually putting these panels back in and then starting to put your seatbelts back in. But because I've got all this stuff taken out, because I, you know, I took out the whole freaking interior, I've got to actually start putting some of this stuff back, I think. So I'm going to start putting in my uh, carpet and all that stuff. I'll put this on time lapse. Once I kind of get this all in better where I think I'm ready to start, then I will come back. All right, so I've got all the carpet kind of back in um, where we need to be, I think. Actually, I need to tighten those guys down. But um, anyway, so I've got this one. Um, it's not installed, but... I've got my, I had to put my, uh, my seatbelt back and stuff. So that's all bolted back like they're telling you. And then now they're saying just start to actually fit it and put all the clips back in, you know, reverse of order. Um, so I got to get started on the other side. And um, yeah, again, well, watch my other video. It shows you kind of how we took all this apart. But, um, you know, there's not a whole lot to it. Like these little clips will clip back in there. And there's, I think, a few different little fasteners, little push tabs. So pretty freaking easy. Um, but I think the hardest part of this whole install is, for one, hopefully these line up. We need to see for that. And then I've still got this guy kind of baking over here. So I'm going to have to uh, take him off and then do some final measurements, kind of see if it's where I need it to be. Otherwise, I need to ratchet strap it a little bit more. But, uh, and it's going to be interesting trying to put this thing in alone. But anyway, let's see. Let's uh, keep rocking and rolling. So I've got both panels now installed. They're not, you know, completely installed. I don't have any fasteners in holding them in. Um, you know, I want to be able to, if I need to move them, but they uh, line up pretty good. Um, so, I mean, they're not, you know, perfectly. That one's kind of, uh, you know, either this is too low, this is too high, something like that. But I think it's going to work. I think I'll be able to swing a, a bolt in there. Otherwise, I'll have to take my file and just kind of file them out a little bit. The other side uh, matches up better. So I'm not too worried about that. And then as far as this goes, you know, I think this one looks really good as far as like going straight in there. The other one, I kind of filed it a little bit more. Um, it was close, but anyway, we're just going to have to try it now. So next step is uh, 
when I undo this thing, kind of take some measurements, make sure it's good, and then I'll have to get uh, probably my wonderful wife to come help me and uh, try to slide this thing in, see if we can get it bolted up. So measuring the distance between the two bolts on the car, it's about 55 inches, uh, I think was what it was last night when I had my wife help me measure. And overnight, I've kind of had this thing sitting here with this ratchet strap. Right now, it's about 48 and a half inches from bolt center to bolt center. So I'm kind of hoping once I blow this ratchet strap off here that maybe it's going to be 55 inches would be ideal. But uh, hopefully, it's at least pretty close. The only other thing I could think of to try to get this thing more to the right size is, um, you know, if it's close enough where I can kind of get it slid in or whatever maybe i can actually take the ratchet strap and kind of tie it around this portion uh and just you know be able to fine tune it with the ratchet strap uh across this point here you know so that'd be nice but we'll have to see so anyway i'm gonna go ahead and uh, blow this freaking ratchet strap off hopefully i don't die and then i'm gonna see uh see where we're at and if it's close enough then uh we'll see if we can start sliding in there all right let's see if i'm gonna die here i'm kind of scared I'm really scared, actually. Oh, baby. Okay. Not too bad. Let's see what we got. Come on, 55. Dude, I, I am not shitting you. Bro, that is like 55. I'm not even kidding. All right, well, let's see what we got, boys. Get this baby over here. Not sure if I'm gonna be able to do this myself here. Might need some assistance from the better half. I swear, if this works the first try, that will just be, that'll be awesome. I think it goes like this. I tell you what, that is pretty close. Whoop. You gotta be kidding me here. It's close. You gotta come down more. At least on this side. I need a light too. This bottom bolt, I can almost swing it right in there. The top one though needs to come. This bar is too far inward, so it needs to come back this way. So I guess I should check and see what we got going on, on the other side here. Yeah, bottom hole looks really good again. So after a couple of minutes of messing with it, I'm able to get this bolt started on this side. And um, this one over here is kind of close on the bottom. I don't think I'm going to get these freaking top bolts at all. Just doesn't, they just don't look like they're lining up for whatever reason. Um, so I didn't really have any, uh, anything securing these panels in. So I did put this back push clip in just to help hold it. This one is kind of fine, but this panel kept moving all around. So I just put that back clip in and I'm hoping now that I've got this bolt down here started with my washer. I can start to manipulate and try to get this bottom bolt in. I'm almost thinking if I can get these two bolts tightened down, even if I don't have the top bolts, I think that's going to be fine. I mean, it's going to hold this thing solid. It's going to be resting on this too, plus that holding it in. I think that'll probably be uh, probably be just fine, but we'll see. Maybe we once we get this all going, maybe there'll be a chance. But, um, you know, you can see here the – oh, where's my light? Yeah, I mean, look at the, uh, look, you can just barely, I mean, that hole is not even freaking close. So I just don't know if it's something with, uh, you know, the angle of my bar, like the bar needs to come, you know, more to the right here. So that could be part of my issue. You know, maybe I didn't uh, drill the hole quite correctly enough. So I think there's going to be some, uh, Definitely some finagling to try to get this thing going. So anyway, I'm going to put it in time lapse and try to get this thing rocking off.
I got the bottom bolts uh, tightened down on both sides and um, you know I kind of pushed it down as far as I could the the fitment on this side is uh, definitely not the best right you can see some gap there so that kind of is what it is I couldn't really manipulate it anymore and these top holes are kind of way off here yeah look at that oh I don't know how well you can see it oh there we go sort of maybe this has to come yeah you can see how the hole you know needed to be more to the right so and I think it's the same way on that side so I think something's up with our bar that's probably why I got the bar from uh, American Muscle and it was a return like I was telling you guys so you know I saved some money but <laughs> maybe that's why it was returned right uh, maybe the bar just you know it it's basically it needs to be you know I mean I, as you guys saw right I had to freaking you know kind of bend it into shape so anyway I'm I'm totally cool I'm totally happy with uh um, just the two bottom bolts because again, it's, you know, it's pushed up against the B pillar of the car. It's also resting on here. It's not going to freaking go anywhere. It's not even completely torqued yet. I just got them kind of tight. And I mean, this thing is solid. It's not going anywhere. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. I think that's going to be fine. And, uh, you know, whatever. I love the looks and, you know, again, I saved some money. I think this was like 200 bucks. I think I spent maybe 40 bucks on the, uh, hardware kit or something like that. So 240, but you know, there just wasn't any good, any other good deals on used ones. And a brand new one, I think was 370 plus tax. So it would have been like over 400 bucks. So um, pretty cool. You can see this side over here fits uh, quite a bit better. But yeah, this side, for whatever reason, the way I cut it or whatever, um, I'm going to take a screwdriver and kind of pop some of that in there. Actually, maybe that'll allow me to push it down some more. So I might play around with the fit, um, but otherwise... We're going to uh, next just go ahead and uh, put all the stuff kind of back together, get the whole back seat area back in. And then I've got to blow in, you know, put in the rest of it with the uh, seats and all that stuff. Probably won't show you guys that, but we'll at least get this uh, all back together so you guys can see it. Um, so we've just got to basically, uh, once we get these tight, put in our pins here. Um, then we've got a pin that will go back here to locate the bottom of this. And then there's just two push pins, uh, one there and one there. Right there. And uh, these side panels are on, and then it's just going to be the top seat, which is secured with two bolts. And then the bottom seat actually just falls right in place and it's snapped in uh, with these little buttons here. So that's all really, really easy. All right, so in the little hardware kit, you've got a uh, couple, well, you've got two on each side of these little black plastic caps. And uh, hopefully, yep, let's pop right in. So that's nice. So that way it covers up your little holes, much less noticeable. Come on, baby. Don't be scared. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's looking sweet. So, like I was saying, guys, the uh, now that we got this done, we can pop in these uh, these little kind of T pieces that go right here below the seatbelt, and they just kind of help. Uh, I think just make the structure a little bit more solid. Well, so you can also slide the seatbelt out. So slide that dude back on. Then the grill cover for the speakers. Bada boom, bada bing. All right, now I think we can uh, move on to the seats. So I think I'm gonna put this plastic cover. This is kind of hanging out there for me. So I'm gonna put this back. And I think this is kind of, you know, it's optional. You probably don't have to have it. But I'm gonna stick that back in and then go ahead and uh, Get our seats popped in again our back seat's just going to go in uh just kind of slides down and then there's two bolts that secure it and then our bottom cushion literally just falls into place there's no bolts it's just held in with these kind of two button these white button clips up here so very very simple for this portion So the front and back seats went back in uh, pretty simply uh, when you're putting in the top here the only thing to kind of uh, a little 
tip or trick, I guess, was to, you know, start it out real low so that it can slide underneath this. And then you just barely have enough room to get the kind of two, there's one clip here, kind of one clip here that popped down. So once you kind of master that, boom, that just slides right in. Easy peasy, two 10 millimeter bolts. And then you can go ahead and uh, slide in your bottom and just make sure you get your seat belts through. And then boom, that just clips right into those little white uh, clips down there. So very, very easy. So we're looking good. Now we just got to throw back in uh, the seats and the center console. So when I was originally removing the interior in the uh, kill mat video, the last video we did, um, if you guys remember, I had broken off this tab and this is the passenger side door pull. And uh, so luckily the piece just, it broke clean off. I was able to recover it. And then I got some uh, Gorilla Glue and I was able to uh, put that back on. And so look at that. I mean, it's, it looks like a baby's pretty good and welded. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get this one assembled. And I think I've still got to wait on this one. I think I've got the driver's side door pull is getting delivered tomorrow. I think I ended up buying a new one because when I bought the car, this was already broken. So uh, real, real common on these cars. So I'll have a new one of those come in again. I got, I got that one off Amazon. I think it was like 35 bucks. And then, oh, you know what? Dang, I can't quite put this all the way back on yet because I actually have to replace that switch. So never mind. We're going to wait to put this on. But anyway, good to know. If you guys have any plastic stuff like that, this uh, Gorilla Glue, you know, I don't know if it's just some kind of crazy super glue, but it works really good. So, I mean, it is, it is freaking on there. So I have no doubt that's going to at least be good to get it on one more time. If I ever have to take it off in the future, then it might be sketchy. All right, we got this baby all back together. It all looks sweet. I'm really digging the uh, styling bar. So again, you know, it's got those little things, but you can't really tell. I mean, this thing is on here. She's freaking solid. So stoked about it. I also have some black floor mats that are on order. And I think those will be here either today or tomorrow too. So that'll kind of complete the interior. But maybe next weekend we will get started doing the uh, 430 gear install, which is what most of all this stuff is for. Uh, a whole bunch of tools and parts and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, should be pretty awesome. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Hopefully this helps you out if you're thinking about doing a styling bar on your SN95 convertible. So uh, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.